Nasty. I think we're in for a nasty big job, boys. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. So the China vet here has been limping around in second gear for well over a year while we saved up to buy our transmission here. We ended up getting a 4L60. This is a level four from RPM Transmissions. So we got that in two days ago. And uh, yeah, we're about to tear this girl apart. What I want to do in this video, this is going to be a two-part video. Um, I have never, ever have I <laughs> removed the transmission in a C5 Corvette. Some of you may already know the transmission is actually in the back in the C5 Corvette. So it requires dropping the whole rear sub, uh, subframe or rear cradle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you got to drop all that out, drop the rear end, uh, all that jazz. So. What I wanna do with this video is kinda of do it as step by step as I possibly can so that other people in the same situation uh, might be able to watch this video and kinda of get an idea of what's going on and uh, what, you know, what all it entails doing this job. Now we're gonna do it in two parts because once we get the transmission out, I'm hoping we're gonna be able to reuse the stock torque converter, but I do wanna take it to a transmission shop and have it flushed and inspected, uh, make sure it's still in good shape. Uh, if it is, we'll reuse it. If it's not, uh, we'll get another torque converter. Guys, I've said it a hundred times. You know, this is going to be primarily the wife's daily driver. It's not going to see a lot, a lot of track time after this. You know, we've got the DR Nova, we've got Chaos Theory, our twin turbo Camaro for that type of thing. Uh, this girl's hopefully going to live a pretty easy life after this. Maybe make a, a few passes every now and then. Uh, we do still have the nitrous kit on it. That's going to stay on there just, you know, in case I do want to play from time to time. But um, we don't want to put a big converter in it. That's where I'm going with this. Uh, I want to stick to stock or close to stock. So uh, if the converter, the stock converter is good after we have it flushed, we're going to reuse it. And uh, if it's not, then I may go a little above. I might get like maybe a 2000 or uh, 2200 stall, something that just gives it a little extra kick. Uh, but I, I don't want a sloppy converter in this thing, guys, because, like I said, this the, the whole objective with this car from the beginning uh, was to drive, you know, run and drive like stock. That's why we just did bolt-ons and nitrous, uh, and, we you know, we didn't go with big cam or anything like that. But anyway, I don't want to ramble too much. I want to kind of get into it. Uh, like I said, I've never done this before, so a lot of this is going to be a learning process for me as we go along, and uh, hopefully what I learned doing this. Hopefully it'll help you guys out too. So first things first, as you can see, I've already got the car jacked up. And uh, normally what I do is I like to put the jack stands under the front cradle or the front K member, whatever you want to call it. You can kind of see where I've got the jack stands located right there. It's just a perfect spot on both sides. And usually what I'll do is I'll also put jack stands uh, in a similar place on the rear cradle. Obviously we can't do that because the rear cradle is coming out, right? Uh, something else I was worried about is once we drop the rear end, the rear cradle, the transmission back here, the car's gonna get kind of front heavy. So I wanted the jack stands kind of far forward. Um, and that's why we didn't just put jack stands at, at the lift points here under the door. We put the front ones all the way up there in the front. So when it gets front heavy, the car doesn't want to just kind of fall off the stands. In the back, we used our six ton jack stands and they're on the factory jacking point. I do not have pucks. I just put a piece of cardboard there, not hurting anything. And then these guys right here, that aren't even touching anything. This is just like a safety. Uh, I get nervous sometimes when I'm under these cars. So I've just got an extra jack stand back here in case this one was to fail. Hopefully this one would catch it, uh, allow me not to get crushed like a grape. Now, if you do have like a set of quick jacks or something like that, uh, those would probably be pretty good for this job too. They suck for uh, transmission removal and 
cars where the transmission's in the front because they really kill your side access. But since we're primarily gonna be working at this car from the back, uh, yeah, a set of quick jacks would be perfect for this, guys. But I don't have the two grand almost to spend on a set of quick jacks, and uh, jack stands work just as well. So after crawling under the car, I can see the fluid is coming from inside the bell housing area. So I think we're looking at one of two things. Uh, most likely thing is our front seal here has probably pushed out, like maybe this clip has popped off and, and the front seal's just popped out. Uh, I'm not sure what causes that. Excess line pressure, maybe something like that. Uh, maybe the same thing that caused our second gear failure, but it's either that or, you know, the more extreme, uh, on the more extreme side of things, it could be a cracked torque converter. So we won't know until we get the transmission out because can't really see up in there too well. Moving right along, next thing we're gonna do is take our back wheels off. So we're looking at these two bolts here which are 15 millimeter. We'll, we'll take our caliper off. And we've got on this side, I don't know about the uh, passenger side yet, but over here on this side, We've got this guy right here. We could probably kind of hang our caliper from so it doesn't fall. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a piece of coat hanger and run it through there and hang it off of that. So, got that out of the way. I'm just gonna thread my bolts back in here a little bit so I don't lose them. Over here on this side, I'm going to disconnect my ABS sensor because I'm pretty sure that's going to have to uh, stay attached to the car and we need to figure out how to get our emergency brake cable unhooked here. So from what I can see we just need to pull down on our cable here yep and that guy just unhooks just like that and then We've got a choice to make. We can either take these two 14 millimeter bolts loose and unbolt the bracket, or we've got our classic little clip here that we can try to, uh, I don't know if you guys can even see that. Can you see that? I don't know. If you can, I'm sorry. Uh, but we've got this little clip here that sometimes we can try to get undone with our... Uh, this is that clip I was telling you guys about and basically you've got to push all three of these tabs in so what you want to do you can actually if you've got strong enough fingers what I just did is I just pushed them in with my fingers but uh, you can usually push two in and like kind of cock it sideways in the bracket and get it hung uh, and then push the other one in and just pull it out of the bracket so I just realized I didn't really clarify but the objective here is we're going to try to take all the suspension and this rear cradle here we're going to try to drop all that as one solid unit so that's the goal here is to try to get everything that has to stay attached to the body like the wiring the e-brake cable try to get it taken loose from from the uh cradle here and try to get all the suspension components taken loose from the body so they can all just kind of drop down with the cradle the last thing we're going to do after we get everything taken loose is there's actually just four really huge nuts uh, on the cradle here holding it up. One here, and uh, there's one up there. You probably can't see it really well just because of the way the light's hitting it. Uh, but once we get everything else taken loose, we'll put our transmission jack under the center of the cradle here. We'll put another jack under our actual transmission pan to keep it held up and uh, you know we'll just lower this cradle down and get out get it out of our way 
So keeping that in mind, the next thing I'm gonna do is take our upper control arm loose here. So that should be easy enough. We got one 18 millimeter bolt here, and then over here on the back side in the dark, there's another 18 mil bolt right here. So we'll just get those out and we should be able to kind of start to uh, tilt this down out of the way. Then after I get those out, we're gonna take our shock bolts here and here. I'm gonna take both those loose from the body as well. And I believe those are 13 millimeter. Yep. All right, ladies and gentle boys. So now that we got all that taken loose and you'll notice I stuck my, my bolts. I, I always put my bolts back in the holes they go in uh, just so I don't lose them. But now that we got all that taken loose, you can see we've got all kinds of movement here. And uh, when we get ready to, that's gonna allow us to pop our CV axle out uh, up there at the transmission. But uh, I believe that's all the hard stuff and by hard stuff i mean hard parts not hard to get to stuff but i believe that's everything on this side other than the wiring that we'll have to take loose uh that was easy peasy guys so we're going to move on over to the other side i'm going to do the same thing and i am not going to force you to watch because well you just saw me do this side okay we got both sides taken loose now the next thing we need to worry about is the wiring the brake lines remember guys i said all the wiring and brake lines and stuff, uh, you can see all this, that all needs to stay with the car. Now, all that stuff is held in place with these little plastic clips from the top side. And what it is, is it's like a, well, you've seen them before, guys. It's just a plastic clip, and then it's got like a hose clamp type thing on it that's holding all these uh, wire harnesses and brake lines down. Now, this is it right here. You'll see it's got the little prong and then it's like a clamp and uh yeah the way i'm pulling these out it is stripping them off so uh i'm probably going to end up ordering some of these and replacing them at a later date uh, i don't want to have to wait on them but if they get here before we put the transmission in then i will replace them when we put it back together uh i i just i don't really see any way to get these out as old and brittle as they are without stripping those splines off so to revise my last statement um some of these like where is it the ones on the side back here uh they actually weren't even holding anything it was just uh see if i can find one here i got laying here uh it was like one of these but there was nothing going through it so the ones that's kind of catty corner on the corners here, you don't even have to worry about taking those off. Now, the ones on the end here, closest to the outside of the vehicle, uh, you can reach up there and unsnap it, so you don't have to pull those completely out. And you may be able to reach in and unsnap these as well. Like the brake line holders, I was able to reach up here and with a screwdriver and just pop it up a little and pop the brake lines out from under them so I didn't have to take those all the way out. So uh, that's awesome. There's your little shortcut so you don't have to take all those out. See, we're already figuring out some shortcuts. So the next thing I wanna do is pop my CV axles out. Basically a pry bar is what you really want from this. I've got one of these pry bar uh, slash screwdriver dealies here. So I'm going to try to reach up in there, see if I can get enough leverage with that to pop it out. But most importantly, because we're sacrificing ourselves for uh, camera quality here, uh, I want to try to get a good spot where you guys can see me. All right, I'm not even going to BS you guys here. I'm having a hard time 
uh, trying to find a camera angle where you can see me and at the same time be able to do what I got to do. So I hope you can see that. I'm sticking a screwdriver up here and kind of beating in on it there a little bit. Trying to separate this axle. And I had a hammer here somewhere. Where's my, where's my hammer? Just trying to tap it to get it in the axle there. And I think she's moving. Yeah, she's moving. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see that. But we got her broke loose. Pull the camera over here where you can see a little better. But there's our axle. I just went up through here with the pry bar. And I'm just going to pull that on out. Can you guys see this? What, nobody's going to say anything? I swear, I hate not getting feedback. I can't believe you guys are letting me do all this. You ain't even going to talk to me. There we go. It just slid out. And, uh, I mean, I guess, <laughs> technically we could take the nut off this side too, but there's really no need to. It's back far enough. It's going to clear everything. And uh, we should be able to drop the... Uh, drop the cradle and just leave all this attached. I'm gonna move along, get the other axle out, and uh, see what else I might need to do before we actually drop this thing. Now at this point, I believe the only thing holding the subframe, or cradle, whatever you wanna call it, to the rear end is these two nuts right here. So, we're just, that's 18 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and take those loose. Wow, I was going to use my little—I uh, was going to use my little power ratchet, but these guys are a fight all the way out. Uh, also, some of you guys might be wondering why I'm not using like my big Milwaukee Impact on some of this stuff, and I've heard a lot of horror stories from guys on uh, various groups and uh, groups and forums about stripping out things when they're doing this job uh, about rounding off studs I've heard about stripping out these, these main bolts here that actually hold the cradle to the frame um, I've heard some horror stories about people using impacts on those and destroying the insert up in there that this goes into and then it just free spins and that's a nightmare guys you don't want to deal with that so uh, I made the decision that on most of this I'm just going to use my hand tools um, now obviously when we get to the bell housing bolt stuff like that uh, that might change but as far as the unknown stuff that I'm not used to dealing with we're going to stick with our hand tools on that at least break them loose with the hand tools and you know I may back them down the rest of the way with something else but anyway uh that's pretty much it guys as far as i can tell all we should have to do is take our four nuts loose and we should be able to drop this cradle now i said earlier we were going to have to get a jack under the transmission before you know before we drop the cradle and uh, that stands but what I want to do now is I've got everything loose from the cradle I know everything's loose from the cradle and when I come up here working on taking things loose from the transmission uh, and taking the exhaust loose stuff like that I don't want to have to deal with working around a jack so we're not going to drop the cradle at this point we're going to leave our four, our four uh, nuts on it holding it up and we're going to move on forward a little bit and start taking some items loose from the transmission i am going to drop my exhaust uh there are different schools of thought on this some people say that you know you can just take your exhaust loose right here or whatever and you can work around it it has been my experience uh <laughs> after 44 years of of piddling with my cars i have come to discover that a lot of the time it is you're better off just spending a little extra time to take stuff out of your way 
um, than spending all your time trying to finagle around said items later on. So I'm going to actually take my exhaust loose. We've got our aftermarket exhaust. <laughs> hint, hint. There's a whole video on this in the uh, China Vet playlist. But we're going to take our exhaust loose right here at the X pipe. I'm going to take the intermediate pipes off. And I'm probably going to go ahead and drop the mufflers and everything to get, you know, to get this pipe out of my way as well. So we've just got all kinds of room. And I don't have to try to, uh, you know, mess around with anything. Moving right along, we need to remove this cover from the torque tube. This little screwdriver, pry that out. And oh yeah, you can see that. We're, we're definitely leaking inside the bell housing there. So once we get that off, we can access our bolts here. And of course these are the torque converter bolts. See what size they are. Well, they are not a 13 millimeter. I know that. I had a 15 here. Let's see what? Yeah, 15 millimeter. Yep, looks like they're 15 millimeter. So we got three torque converter bolts, guys. I'm not sure how to hold this without having somebody at the front. I think possibly I can stick my screwdriver in here like this. And uh, wow. All right. Those are snug. Okay, so there's a small cover back here, looks like this. And I'm not 100% sure. What the purpose of that is, um, I stuck a screwdriver in there and I can kind of move the torque converter around a little, but I can't find any way to actually just hold it while I'm, uh, while I'm trying to do this. So, and these bolts are on here pretty snug or they've honestly, they've probably got Loctite on them. So let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna break these loose without having somebody holding the crank pulley. Okay, so that just was straight up kicking my ass. Uh, turns out, yeah, there's just a ton of Loctite on these bolts. So again, uh, all I can say is, I hope you've got either an impact or you've got somebody to hold, uh, to hold the uh, crank pulley up there why you put a breaker bar on these and break it loose I ended up using my impact and just using a universal joint but I got the first one off and it looks like I can use my screwdriver here and kind of pry on the torque converter I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing over here I'm not sure where the camera's facing at this point but you can kind of grip the fins on the torque converter enough to sit here and work it around to get to the next bolt. So I'm gonna hit the next couple bolts and uh, I'll be back with the next step. Well, that one come out a lot easier. Moving right along, I'm gonna come over here to this side of the transmission and now that we've moved our exhaust out of the way, I've got plenty of room. I'm, I'm gonna reach up here and disconnect the park neutral switch or gear selector switch, whatever you wanna call it. Now, there's a little problem here, guys. I'm not sure if these are gonna be like the truck connectors, but most of the truck connectors that I've seen, they have almost like this glue inside of them. So hopefully they didn't do this on this Corvette, but I, I can't really do this. You are gonna have to pry a little bit in here with a screwdriver in here um 
unless they've been taken loose before so i can't really hold the camera and do that at the same time but we're taking this top plug and this plug loose take our shifter cable loose which honestly we could probably do that right now but i'd say it probably just snaps off i don't know if there's any kind of release on it nope just pops off with a screwdriver so that's your shifter cable loose all right so i'm going to work on getting these connectors off and i'll let you know in a second if they're caked full of glue like the truck ones usually are so it looks like they are caked with something you can see it on there this substance uh, i mean i guess it's meant to seal the contacts so they don't get moisture in it but what i did is i stuck a screwdriver in there initially and i kind of broke it loose i heard it crack and then i just sit here and wiggled it back and forth like that and it eventually came loose so i'm gonna have to do the same thing with the top one here uh again the stuff that's in here i mean i'm sure it's there to keep you know moisture out but it acts like glue after how old is this car i guess this car is uh 20 years old now it's a 2002 so you know once this stuff hardens up it acts like glue but i will say at least with this bottom connector it's not as bad as i've seen on most of the trucks uh most of the trucks that i've done i've taken this apart on i, I mean i destroy the connectors getting them off so it's a good thing that they're usually going in swaps and i usually don't use this uh gear selector switch anyway you guys know i do my best to be 100 percent honest with you and if i'm being 100 percent honest getting this top plug out was the most <laughs> excruciatingly difficult and aggravating part of this transmission removal so far you can see all the glue that's caked around that connector and i just had to pry a little pull a little pry a little pull a little i've been at it for about probably 15 minutes and in the process of all the prying i actually i don't know if you can see it i ended up breaking a little piece off the top of the uh the switch here i mean it won't matter it'll, it, it'll still be fine but uh, yeah that sucks <laughs> but anyway that's off there so and there's a little clip on the transmission up here that's holding that wire harness so you want to unclip that i can't really get a camera angle on it because this back part of the exhaust is in the way i don't know if you can see it but it's a clip like right right here if you can see that coming over here to this side i'm just looking up here and again you probably can't see it because the exhaust is in the way i to get you to where you can but the camera's probably gonna make scruffing noises but you got your main wire harness here that goes in and you just got to squeeze the tabs on the side of the connector and pull it out and it's that guy right there so we got it pulled out now we may have to finish taking the exhaust off on this side get up there to our transmission lines i believe those are 15 millimeter on those transmission lines so if i had already dropped the subframe uh, i'd probably be able to get to that a lot easier so uh I'm not sure if I want to do that or not, but just for the purpose of making it easier for me to get shots and I mean honestly, it'll make it easier for me to reach stuff too. Uh, I've made the decision to go ahead and drop this uh, This cradle at this point. So what I've done is I've taken my transmission jack and I've got it up here toward the front of the transmission the plan is once I get the cradle dropped um, I'll come in here and I will use one of my other jacks and put under the rear end and then we'll move i mean once i get everything taken loose we'll be able to move our transmission jack back here under the pan to you know hopefully where we'll have everything nice and balanced so uh for the time being uh let's drop this cradle out and see if we can do this without messing anything up so we got our jack under it we're going to take our four nuts loose we've got this one got that one 
and then they're in the same places on the other side so i'm gonna go ahead take those loose i am going to use a ratchet not my impact because uh, as I stated at the beginning of this video, I've heard some horror stories about people stripping stuff out. So we're going to try to not make that happen. And in typical bad luck garage fashion, we have a problem and I'm not sure what to do about it. So our whatever it is, our insert or whatever it is that holds this from uh, holds this stud from spinning up in the frame. It is no longer holding it from spinning. Uh, not too sure what to do about this, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to lube this up and grab a pair of vice grips and maybe use a wrench instead of a socket and try to hold this while I turn this nut off. But um, <laughs> I have no idea have no idea how we're gonna fix this. Here's what I'm doing to at least get it off so I can uh, go from there. Uh, I've taken a wedge. I got all the other bolts uh, or the other nuts off and I let my jack down to let the, the cradle droop some to put tension on this bolt holding it down. And to put more tension on it, I have taken a metal wedge and driven it between the uh, cradle and the frame of the car and what I'm having to do is I'm getting like a turn or two Then the stud starts spinning. I have to hammer my wedge in a little further get another turn or two Then the stud starts spinning hammer the wedge in more um, This seems to be working for getting it off uh, Once we get this off, we're gonna have to figure out another solution to uh, possibly fixing this I'm I'm not sure how this operates. I might have to get online and Google and, you know, see if someone's, I mean, I already know people have had this problem. That's why I didn't use the impact because people were saying it was from the impact. But I'm telling you this, guys, uh, I feel like everybody says to take tension off of these while you're taking them loose or breaking them loose. I feel like you need tension on them. Like you should let this cradle ride on them a little bit because I think what's going on is the end of that bolt is sitting in some kind of like slot that holds it and if there's no tension on the bolt it can pop up above that and round it off and I think that's what's happened here and I'm not sure how you access that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's something in the top of the frame that you get to to access that or what the deal is but uh, I intend to find out once we get this all apart. We didn't need this. We didn't need this either. <laughs> Cradle is out and I have a helpful tip for you. Run your board from front to back and put your jack right about here on the bottom side. And this guy balance is perfect. So you don't need a special jack or anything like that to get it out. Um, like I just said, just run you, get you a, a small piece of, uh, of uh, two by eight, two by six, whatever this is, and just run it from the front to back. And again, center your jack in the center this way. And right about here, I believe is where my, oh no, I'm sorry. Right about here is where my jacking pad is, if you can see that. So I did that. And as you can see, when the wife was lowering it for me, uh, it didn't really try to rock. It didn't hardly do side to side or nothing. It just, it came straight down. So that was perfect. Now, what's also awesome is now that that's out of the way, we've got a ton of room under here to work. So the only thing we have left to do is we've got to take our two transmission lines loose, which we've got just easy access to now. Here was that plug over here on this side. Um, 
and then we've got our bell housing bolts and then underneath our giant currently which we're gonna end up moving that uh, there's another bolt but it goes in from this direction instead of from this direction uh, like all these other bolts so yeah so at this point what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get a drain pan under here I'm going to drain as much fluid out of the transmission here as I can and then I'm going to take those two transmission lines loose I'm going to double check make sure there's no other wiring attached to this and then I'll move I'll put a jack under the rear end to hold the weight so I can move my transmission jack back right here under the pan and we should be ready to lower it after we take the bell housing bolts out now here's the thing guys the center of gravity you know you've got all you've got this rear end back here on the back side which is probably pretty heavy but keep in mind you've also got a torque converter up there which is pretty damn heavy too so I'm thinking if I put my transmission jack somewhere right in here um, we might be okay <laughs> we'll just have to see uh, I'm actually gonna have Ray over here when we actually lower this down to help me but for now uh, I'm gonna get these lines loose get this uh, trans fluid drained and yeah get these jacks moved around just a heads up earlier I said I believe I said these were 15 millimeter or right, your uh, your trans lines uh, they're not they're actually 15 or I mean uh, 16 millimeter so yep 16 millimeter wrench will get those guys off and it looks like your bell housing bolts are gonna be 13 millimeter you're gonna probably have to use a combination of long and short swivel sockets long extensions um, you know just to make it a little easier on yourself those top bolts up there uh, yeah you're definitely gonna want to use a swivel and some long or a universal joint and some long extensions so. now I actually lowered the transmission everything down a little just to make it easier to get to everything you can see I can actually reach up there and I can actually reach up there and touch all the bolts now so uh, I just lowered it a little um, to not quite enough to where it's touching our plate I don't know why I can't think of what that's called but the plate that's above the X pipe there that's got like 20 bazillion volts in it uh, we're not gonna have to take that out but just when you're lowering it down like this just make sure that you can still move your transmission lines freely make sure that you're not pinching them or anything like that but when I lowered it down I did notice a few things number one this harness is clipped to the rear end so we need to pop that off like so and another thing there's actually a connector right here on top of the rear end so we need to get that unconnected I'm not sure if that's a speed sensor or what that is but uh, it has to stay up here with the harness with the car so we need to make sure we disconnect that before we drop anything uh, lest we tear something up in our harness and what I'm actually gonna do is we've got our emergency brake cable here so I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm gonna zip tie our harness up out of the way like this so that when we drop everything uh, the harness ain't just drooping down with it and you know once we put the train the new transmission and rear end up in here we'll be able to just cut that zip tie or heck I might just leave it instead of having this attached here like that we might just leave it zip tied up like that got all the bell housing bolts out none of them were really difficult to get to I just used a uh, really long extension here and of course a universal joint a wobble probably would have been better because it would have held the socket a little better but I can't find it right now <laughs> so what I did with the jacks is I just pulled my other jack out from underneath the uh, out from underneath the cradle there and I put it under the rear end so I could move my transmission jack back as I said earlier because of the hump in this pan uh, we are gonna have a little wobble there but I'm hoping not too much it does kind of fit down in the 
crease in that transmission jack a little and I went ahead and wrapped my strap around and tried to strap it down as tight as I could. Uh, there's not a, really enough room to operate this correctly so I just kind of rigged it but uh, honestly guys none of the bolts were extremely hard to get to. Also as I mentioned earlier in the video don't forget about this bolt right here on the very bottom. It goes in from the back side you know exact opposite way of all the other bolts so it would be easy to forget about and it would suck to snap that uh snap that area off your bell housing because you forgot about that bolt but should be it guys we should be ready to separate it and lower this thing down Trying to catch oil at the same time. Yeah. Good. She's out, guys. Uh, I hope you kind of see what was going on. It was pretty straightforward. We just pulled it back about two or three inches just to clear the converter and uh, just lowered it down. She came out nice and easy. We're dumping gear oil out the diff here, but that's pretty much it for the removal. Next video, what I'm going to work on, we need to separate the rear end from the, uh, from the transmission so we can get this transmission box back up and sent back to RPM so we don't get charged some kind of massive core charge. That would suck. <laughs> Um, and while we got this out, I'm going to go ahead and replace these seals. I think I might have said that earlier in the video. I'm going to go ahead and replace these seals. Um, this one's been leaking a little bit. You can tell it's all wet down here. The other side's been leaking really bad. Uh, so we'll get those replaced and we'll see what kind of condition the seal in here is in. We might go ahead and replace that too. But that's it for now guys uh i hope you enjoyed this hope you got something out of it if you're thinking about doing this yourself um that's pretty much everything involved so thanks for watching i'll get out in the garage get something done and i'll see you next time here on bad luck garage